So uh, I'm not a motivational speaker. Uh, these guys really uh, humble me. Oh, Dave, thank you for, for taking over. <laughs> Dave's going to do the technology for me. I actually am a computer scientist and a software engineer. Um, normally, <laughs> normally, this is the thing I do well. Um, I actually spent about five years uh, in an improv comedy troupe. Does everybody know what improv comedy is? It's, um, if you've ever seen Whose Line Is It Anyway? You know, these guys get up and they, they get a suggestion and they do a scene. And one of the games that we used to play in improv was called Countdown. And in Countdown, you're given a suggestion, you get out, you do a one minute scene and everybody claps and then they say, okay, now do that again, but in half the time, 30 seconds, right? Great, now do that again and do it half the time, 15 seconds. And they say, great, having done that, you get a choice, you can do it again in 10 seconds, or you can do it in reverse, and you come out, and whatever the audience says, that's what you do. So this presentation is actually a two-hour presentation. <laughs> uh, Sean gave me 15 minutes, so I cut it in half, and cut it in half, and now we're going to do it in reverse. All right. No, I'm kidding, we're not going to do it in reverse, but we are going to do it in about 10 minutes, um, and I, I am not going to just uh, run through it really quickly, but I am going to run through it as quickly as I can. Yep. So uh, what I do uh, for a living is, is a software thing, but what I, by day I write software, by night I help people write their first draft novel in six months. And one of the things that people come to me with is, I want to not write my life story. Well, that's an autobiography. Uh, that's the story of an entire life. And unless you're famous or infamous, most people aren't interested in your life story. <laughs> However, if you... <laughs> done something in your life that you've overcome something or you've accomplished something, this is a slice of life and a memoir is perfect for that. So we're going to talk a little bit about being the hero of your own story and using the hero's journey in personal story time. So as I said, by day I'm a computer scientist and software engineer. I created the Agile Writer Workshop in 2011 to help beginning writers create first draft novels in six months. We use Joseph Campbell's hero's journey and screenwriting techniques to break the story down into eight stages. Each stage represents 30 pages in your novel. Each stage ends with a major turning point so that you write 10 pages a week for 25 weeks and you've got a novel and you're done. And one of the things that's unique about the Agile Writer Method as opposed to other novel writing methods is we know how big our story is going to be before we get started. A lot of people will uh, start writing a novel that looks like a big project so they don't want to get started. 99% of the reason people don't finish their novel, for one thing, but any project is because of fear. I don't know if I'm doing it right, I don't know what comes next, and we uh, try to eliminate all that thing. We, we take all the pins out from under you so by the time you're done, it's like you have no reason to fear this project anymore. And then finally, um, I presented this method to thousands of uh, beginning writers. Um, over 50 people I've coached have finished their first drafts in the last eight years, so we're doing about six or seven novels a year now, and over a dozen of my uh, writers have published. Um, along the way, I uh, met Dr. Scott Allison, who was also an improviser at, at Comedy Sports when I was there. He studies heroes and heroism at the University of Richmond. And since 2013, we've been running the RealHeroes.net blog, where we uh, review movies for their heroic content. And we've written two books on the subject, Real Heroes and also Real Heroes and Villains. Um, the version of the hero's journey that, by the way, who here knows the hero's journey already? Oh, three, good, so I will talk about it. Um, First off, uh, Christopher, um, excuse me, uh, Joseph Campbell was a comparative mythologist. He studied all these myths across time and different cultures, and he found that they all tell the same basic story. It's a story of a, a, a person who starts in one place, who has a, a challenge, overcomes the challenge, and learns something, and then brings that message back to the tribe. Christopher Vogler was a, uh, uh, an executive at Disney in the 80s, and he read uh, Campbell's seminal work, The Hero with a Thousand Faces, and he said, you know, that thing reminds me of like almost every good movie I've ever seen. Except that we don't have Ascension to Godhood, we don't have, was it, uh, Atonement with the Father, we don't have Meeting the Princess. So he be able to those, he boils those 19 stages down into these. And if you look at the story like The Wizard of Oz, and virtually every movie, every story, every novel you read will have this pattern. The hero starts out with her ordinary world, so gorgeous in Kansas. Um, there's a call to adventure, in her case a tornado comes and says, take me away. And, and she says, I'm not going, and she doesn't want to go. Then what happens is uh, she, does a, she lands in Oz and she crosses the first threshold into uh, a colorful different world where she meets a mentor, Glinda the Good Witch. She has tests, allies, and enemies. She meets the Scarecrow, the Scarecrow and she go into the forest, um, they, they pluck a, a, an apple, the trees get mad at them, they run out of the, 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 the forest, they throw stones at the trees, the trees throw apples at them, they must accomplish their first, um, their, their, their first test. 
Next comes the approach to the inmost cave. Um, this is a moment of calm reflection for the hero where they're making a plan and thinking about what they're going to do, what they've been through, what they're here for. And in the case of Dorothy, she's in this outer area and they're about to go see the wizard. And uh, you know, he's going to be a good wizard, he's going to be a bad wizard, and a long song that for some reason stops the show and we think about courage. Next comes the ordeal. And in Dorothy's case, uh, she was uh, up in a uh, tower, she's rescued, they run away from the witch. The witch corners them, she puts the scarecrow on fire. Um, they douse the scarecrow, but um, the witch melts. And so they get the reward, which is the broomstick, and they begin the road back. So they go back to Oz, where they find out the, uh, the wizard is not a wizard, but an ordinary man. And he says, I'll take you home. So this is the road back, and all, it's Lord of the Rings. You, they go on their adventure, they have their adventure, they come back. And Dorothy has this resurrection moment. It's not actually dying and coming back to life, but it's leaving behind of who she was as a naive farm girl and resurrecting as the hero she always should have been. And then finally, there's the return with the elixir where she wakes up at, uh, in, in Kansas and uh, she gives them the message. Um, if ever uh, I wanted my heart's desire, all I had to do was look in my own backyard, or there's no place like home. And in, in this case, Dorothy starts out thinking that she's not, uh, she doesn't have brains, courage, and heart. By helping her friends find these things, she finds them in herself, and now she is a full hero. Um, so that's the basic pattern of just about every movie, every novel that you'll come across, uh, and it's called The Hero's Journey. So, in storytelling, uh, we call the protagonist the hero of the story. Whether they're male or female, we still call them the hero. It's not necessarily a classic hero, like your first responder, or your war fighter, fighter, or your superhero. And a lot of people get this confused. I think if I'm going to be the hero of my own story, I have to be super. It's not really true. You're good enough as you are, and you are already a hero. So if you look at Star Wars and Skywalker as the hero of that story, the Wizard of Oz, the story of Gale. Does anybody know this, this uh, woman, jo, uh, Joy Mangano, the, the movie Joy? Okay, I highly recommend this movie. Did she create the Swiffer? Almost, yes. She created the Miracle Mop, right? So that you can pull it and twist it, because she was a, a divorced mom, she was working in her dad's shop, and she was always mopping up and getting her hands chapped. I don't want to touch the water. And she invented this thing, and everybody told her, it's a man's, it's the 70s, right? It's a man's world, you don't have any business doing this, you can't be an entrepreneur. Beautiful, beautiful story, but you know, if she's an entrepreneur, she's not a superhero. Cheryl Strayed, does anybody know this movie, Wild? Yeah? Um, she, uh, she, she, I can't remember her backstory, but she decides she's going to walk the Rockies, right? And so she, and it's not a story about walking the Rockies, it's about her self-image, like, and becoming who she really is. And so you don't have to be a first responder, you don't have to be a warfighter or a superhero. Um, Joy and uh, uh, Cheryl Strayed are ordinary people. Right? And they have a heroic story. Um, the big secret of storytelling is that the reader is the hero of the story, or in the case of movies, the viewer. The reader wants to become the hero of the story. And because that's the case, if you want your story to sell, you need to make sure that that hero is relatable, sympathetic, so that the hero can identify with the hero. Now that doesn't mean that the hero is perfect. In fact, that is a counterexample or an anti-pattern. The perfect hero is not interesting. Compare Superman to Batman. Nothing hurts Superman. You know, it's really difficult to write a story for Superman because he can do everything. Batman, on the other hand, is a tortured soul. Lots of room there. And in what they did in the Superman movies is they gave him a missing inner quality, which was alienation. He felt like he, he, was, he was separated from humans, right? And so he had this constant uh, problem trying to uh, integrate. The hero must have a missing inner quality. Empathy, compassion, confidence, or morality that they must overcome by the end of the story. And believe it or not, blowing up the Death Star, you know, getting the, 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 the girl at the end of the story, these are not the things the story is about. These are the things that keep, keep people turning pages. What the story is about is overcoming that missing inner quality, right? How many stories have we heard today that were about overcoming a missing inner quality, right? And that's the reason why this method works well for memoir, and people at Agile Writers have used it. Uh, the main goal should be tangible, so many people want to make the main goal something like, you know, um, I want my reader, my, my, my character, my hero to be happy at the end, or to be, to be rich. These things are not tangible. Um, happy, how did you know you wanted to be happy? So one writer said, my, my hero is in uh, Liberia, and she wants to be happy. I said, well, what made her happy? Well, um, her, her, she's, she's unhappy because her father is not safe in the cabin. Why is the father unsafe? Well, it, there are no windows or doors. They're too poor to have windows or doors. So how, 
what, what do you need to do? We need to get windows and doors on the cabin and then he'll feel safe and then she'll be happy. Now we have a tangible goal. So this woman's story became getting windows and doors on the cabin. And along the way, she opened a school for young women in a place where women were not allowed to have education. Okay? So she overcame this missing inner quality of not feeling competent, but at the same time, her, her real goal was to put doors on the, on the hut. Um, and then finally, you want to expose a message, and this is the boon, and Campbell talks about this, that when you come back from your journey, you're bringing a boon, and this is the message. Why did we go on this journey to begin with? And it's very often related to the missing inner quality. I want you to know that you, what, you, know, you can overcome your challenges, um, that you're a, a good person, uh, that you have, can have empathy, whatever that message is, and it's usually tied to the missing inner quality. And again, this is like a two-hour presentation, so we're going to cover it. <laughs> um, so overcoming the missing inner quality. The hero doesn't have to get the main goal, but she must overcome the missing inner quality. So in The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy returns home. She overcomes her missing inner quality because she learns she has brains, heart, and courage. Rudy, does everybody know this story? Yes. The movie? Yes. I love this movie. Yes. I, I'm amazed at how many people actually know this because it's a pretty old movie. But Rudy wants to play football. He's, a, he's growing up in the seal town with his best friend. He dies. It's called The Inciting Incident. He then goes to, uh, to college. He can't get into Notre Dame, so he goes to uh, a, a community college. If he goes for two years and gets good grades, he's automatically admitted. He gets into Notre Dame. All along, he's playing on the training team for Notre Dame. They never put him on the big, in the big game, right? So he gets to the end of the, uh, the, the four years, uh, and he goes to his mentor, and he says, look, I've wasted my time. I've been here four years, never got to play on the big field. I've wasted my time. His mentor says, no, you're an idiot. You now have a four-year diploma from one of the finest universities in the world. The, war, the world is your oyster now. Okay, so he's overcome this missing inner quality of feeling a lack of intelligence or a lack of confidence, even though he never got his goal of playing for Notre Dame. But of course, we have a Hollywood ending where they give him the last minute and he runs for a final touchdown. <laughs> Finally, this generates a catharsis in the reader, and this is what you want. Your reader is following your character, your hero, through this story, and at the end, whether they get the main goal or not, they resolve that missing inner quality. And you need to give that to the reader because that's the payoff. It's not blowing up the death star, it's not returning home. It's overcoming the feeling that I'm not adequate, that I'm not smart, that I lack confidence. Whatever that missing goal is, or missing inner quality is, that's the thing that generates catharsis in the reader. You acquire a reader by the first paragraph of your book, but you acquire a fan by the last chapter, the catharsis. Again, stories are metaphors. They're not real life. So many people watch a movie and they say, that's not the way it really goes. You may learn this hero's journey pattern. You may see it on the movies and uh, read it in books and realize <clears throat> this story's following this pattern. And then you say, my life doesn't work like that, right? I mean, it's like, you know, I, I went to school for four years and I got to the end and they got my diploma and uh, like, I didn't bring home a message, right? So. Um, but what they are are metaphors that say, look, if you have this challenge in your life, that there is an end point. And it's more like, if you remember the story of Hercules, remember how he had to clear the, the stables? That's what stories are for. They're to give you an example. And one of my favorite things George R.R. R. Martin said is, a reader lives a thousand lives before he dies. A man who never reads lives only once. Okay? And so what, the, what we're doing is we're building up a, a catalog of examples of, of heroes who have gone through challenges like the ones that we all go through either every day or over time, so that we can look at them and say, yes, there is a path to success here. Finally, um, why do we crave stories? Um, the stories remind us that we're all heroes. Stories show us that we can not overcome these obstacles, and they also expose our shared values, morals, and culture. Um, I believe that stories are a delivery mechanism for your message. Um, and like I said, we saw a lot of really great heroes journeys today on this stage. And when you want to deliver something that people may not want to hear, you give a delivery mechanism. Like a spoonful of sugar helps the medicine go down. Cigarettes are not fun, but they deliver nicotine, which is fun. Viruses, right, they are used to deliver gene therapy. If I said to you, we don't need religion, we don't need uh, belongings, uh, we, we don't need governments, we don't need war, it's just me on stage saying that. But John Lennon puts that to music, He's a genius, right? <laughs> because he was a genius at delivering his message with something that gets into you and stays with you. And your story is exactly the same thing. 
People expect this hero's journey pattern. And when you learn to use it, you can take your message and deliver it effectively, and it will stick with people. Um, it is a time-tested pattern. Every culture throughout time has used it. Even children's books use it. Who remembers the book, uh, Are You My Mother? Does anybody remember the yeah. little bird in the nest and it yes. falls out? Do you remember it? It's exactly that. He's in a nest. He falls out. He's in the special world. He goes out looking. He has challenges. He you know, meets the, the cow, and it's when he meets the, the plane and the train. And then the, 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 the what do you call it? Nerf? Barf? Anyway, the, 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 the bad thing like lifts it up and then drops him in the nest, and his mom comes back. Well, that's a hero's journey. And why is it compelling? In my opinion, it's because it's in our DNA. We expect these stories. And now uh, you can use the same thing. People expect the story, and it is a delivery mechanism for your message. Uh, at Agile Writers, people have written memoirs. Um, I want to point out that memoirs are different from uh, autobiographies. As I said at the beginning, autobiographies are more for famous and infamous people. Uh, memoirs are a fictional retelling of true life events, not a factual event by event, log of actual events. Um, one of the challenges that people have when they come to Agile Writers to write a memoir is they have to release their, their story. Um, they want to tell everything, and it's like, not a, you have to really get it all in there. If it was a 20 year odyssey, you're not going to get there uh, with a memoir. It's a slice of life, right? It's, it's like, there was one guy that I read, um, Look Me in the Eyes. It's a story of a young man with um, Asperger's, right? And he went on to be like the um, guitar me, uh, master for Kiss. And then he like did all their great guitar work. And the thing was that he didn't tell, he, he, he did tell a long story, but he focused on his autism, right? And, and how that affected him and how it got him to where he was and how he lived with it. Um, and so you, you have to realize that you're not going to tell your story event by event, but to focus on like the part where you say, this is the thing where I realized I need to overcome something. And then that is where your story takes its turn. So uh, at Agile Writers, Christine Gauthier wrote a story about alopecia. Um, she was struck with alopecia. She thought she needed a man in order to be complete, and that she couldn't attract a man without hair. Um, and by the end of the story, she's got a man, and she has no hair. Um, Injustice by Van Puren. Uh, she was wrongfully committed of a crime, and she is now writing her story, not so much to say, I was wrongfully committed, but look for this, that, that people who are in the position of prosecution um, get their rewards by more prosecutions, and so they will do things that are not legal <laughs> and right to make sure that that happens. Even if you're not like someone who deserves to be uh, uh, prosecuted, they will find a way to do that. And so she's telling her story to make sure that people know this. Um, so there are, I do have some advice if you're going to tell your personal story. Please use the hero's journey because it will get your message to them. And it is a time-tested pattern. You don't have to think about it and make it up. You can use this. Um, except that you are the hero of the story, even if you're not necessarily classically heroic. So often people want to tell their own story of heroism and say, my mom saved me, or my brother saved me, or that, that officer saved me. You are the hero of the story, and you must take your story and tell it. Know your audience and begin with an end in mind. Um, why are you telling the story? Are you telling it, and I talk about this at the end, are you telling me for catharsis, revenge, posterity, or to preach a philosophy that you have? These are bad reasons to write a memoir. Uh, what you want to write a memoir for is, there are people who are like me who need to have this story and to help them get through their, uh, their hero's journey. See my hero's journey and see how I got there. Many people come to Agile Writers not at the end of their hero's journey. They're in the middle, right? And they're trying to, they're trying to say, I'm going to tell everyone what happened. It's like, well, how does it end? It's like, I don't know yet, I haven't gotten there. It's like, well, let's come back when you've got that. But if you are in that space, what's some of the other things? Make sure you have a clear ending. Make sure that you overcome the missing inequality. Have high stakes. Um, what's the risk to you uh, in this story? What did you risk? What did you lose to overcome this? We talked about how some people had to you know, cut people out of their lives. That's part of the risk. And be authentic. Um, so many times people want to like, you know, either exaggerate or um, you know, think themselves come off well. Um, just be authentic. We're all flawed people, and uh, I think that actually is more compelling than if you try to make yourself look good. And finally, not everyone is ready for a memoir. Uh, you may be in your own hero's journey right now, and in that case, I recommend therapeutic writing. Uh, so find and create a journaling group, write and share your those thoughts, experiences, joys, and learnings. Um, at that point, you're an audience of one. Uh, you're 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 getting the story out, right? And you're getting it told on a piece of paper or in a book that you're uh, using for yourself. And we've heard some people talk today about journaling, and I think that's a great idea. 
And then save this as research because you are going to overcome whatever's going on. You are going to get to that end of to the end of your hero's journey, and you're going to have that message to share. And when that happens, people are going to want to hear it. So that's everything I've got for now. Um, <laughs>